Alright, in this video, I'm going to make a quick LaTeX guide for Zoomers. You see, lots of people, uh, they can't install a LaTeX um, compiler, or they can't use a text editor for some reason. Lots of these people, they use, they don't use a proper operating system with a package manager. They use Windows or something on which it is very difficult to install uh, LaTeX or anything for using LaTeX. So, I'm going to show you how you can use LaTeX on an online, cloud-based uh, solution. Now, of course, you shouldn't use this if you can avoid it, because it's better to go with the other route, but I'm going to show it for those who can't. Uh, the main one people know of is called Overleaf. Um, so, Overleaf, online LaTeX editor. Uh, they actually have lots of really helpful guides and stuff. Whenever I look up how to do something in LaTeX, one of the first results is normally from them. Uh, and they have, like, w basically wiki pages on different things. However, it does, uh, take a while to load their website sometimes, so uh, I guess I'll have to let that happen. In the meantime, let's just look up LaTeX Online. Okay, we can actually um, just use this now that it's loaded. Uh, of course, you'll have to make an account, which is something inconvenient about it. Um, if you want, if you have a Google account or whatever this is, you can use those. But I'm just going to open up Gorilla Mail, and um, so let's take this address, put that in there, uh, do a super secret password, and then. Yeah, register, and then it asks about these uh, bridges. Of course, you have to do the capture, and then it says "Welcome to Overleaf." You can create your first project. Um, let's. They actually have lots of helpful templates as well. Uh, let's just look at one of those. Academic Journal, uh, you can choose from all of these. Uh, this one looks interesting. And open as template. Uh, since I don't actually use this, I don't get this convenience. I have to, like, download it and stuff. Uh, but this comes with a lot of stuff. You can fill in your own uh, content. Um, and it looks like it also has a directory with all the different stuff in there. Um, I don't think I'll be showing how to, uh, like, edit this specific document, but I could say, like, my article, and you can click recompile, and then it will say my article. Now, I'm assuming being an online, uh, thing, if, like, it actually tells you the, it's like an IDE, it tells you the specific errors. Sometimes when you're just using VI and LaTeX MK, or even PDF LaTeX, it won't tell you with that much clarity what you're doing wrong. But this is sort of a nice convenience, since you can, uh, you know. And it even, actually I'm going to show in a new plane thing so I can give more uh, specific input. Let's go all the way back. New blank project one. Uh, okay, it's not even blank. It includes all the basic stuff you need. I often type this out, but before I memorized it, I would basically just copy and paste this to start my document. Uh, oh yeah, I used my email for uh, my name, if I could say tube and get rid of the date because uh, of course it has the date automatically. Now if you wanted to actually type up your own LaTeX document, 
Uh, and you most certainly could. Uh, let's make this text larger. And let's open up my dot tech. And you could type this all out. So at this point, if you wanted, you could put all your own content. So I could say, like, paragraph uh, stuff. Here is some content. Uh, and of course, you can watch my other LaTeX video where I go over a lot of the basic things you can do. And then you can simply uh, upload this from your computer. Uh, so I have it in slash temporary uh, right here. And you can just look at this uh, thing right here. And uh, this will include everything. So you don't even need to use our online editor. A reason you might do this is because VI and Vim they have key bindings that seem to not be available in this online editor. And, like, if you're not constantly online, you can't use this. Uh, now let's uh, demonstrate how you might uh, include other files, like images. So if you can say, oh wow, it, if you type in a command here, it shows you, like, all the things you can use. But it knew we were going to use use package. Uh, and it's graphic X, I believe. So this is a reason you probably would use the online editor. So now I can say uh, include graphics. Actually, it's download a picture, image, picture. Um, let's include, let's do picture copyright free. Okay, let's just use this first one here. Let's uh, save it. I'm gonna put it in the temporary directory with everything else. Pick.jpg. So now um, we can upload something again. Uh, and we can say include graphics um, pick. I think you can. Uh, omit the extension if you want, uh, and then you can say width equals text width, and then if we recompile it, you see it's there, uh, yeah, that, there are some errors when you do text width, I'm going to quickly do a small skip right here. Uh, and you can say, like, width equals 0 0.5 text width, and that will um, have it take up half the width of the text, which is about that range. Uh, you can also do scale equals 0 0.5. For reference, I'll do 0 0.7. Uh, and that's... Oh, yeah. It, the problem with this is that scales it with respect to the original image size and not the actual text width. So you can do like width equals text width, like I just did. Uh, and that will keep the aspect ratio. There are specific uh, things you can do to. Uh, here, let's make this error go away. That should be good. You can. Um, adjust it. Let's actually look up uh, overleaf um, images and their site. They have a section on inserting images uh, and it tells you everything you need to know. You just do include graphics and that does it. You can include a different path if you're using a folder. Uh, you can scale it like that. Uh, you can give specific centimeter uh, sizes for the width and height, respectively. You can even angle it. Um, now, 
as I think you basically get the gist of uh, Overleaf or how you do online law tech, uh, if that is helpful. Now, I was also just going to look at other random uh, online law tech things. I used this thing called LaTeX Base the other day when I was using a computer that didn't have LaTeX on it. Uh, in this, it doesn't require an account, but it's probably lacking in features compared to uh, Overleaf. But I think this one also compiles automatically. So if we look here, maybe I'm wrong. No. It just has a bit of delay, but it does automatically compile out there. Uh, and you, c by default, it's a public thing, so you can just copy the URL and uh, just uh, share with people or anything. Uh, and I think if you make an account, you can. Oh, they have a premium, so you can make like private documents and whatnot. But anyway, I hope this uh, video is helpful. And I hope you can now use LaTeX uh, if you were not previously able to. Thank you for watching.